Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this morning. We have a great show lined up, a special guest here in the studio. But first, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin and Highway 77. These afternoon thunderstorms, they've been strong. It's, you know, it's been a 50% chance for the last couple of weeks. Still continues like that. Like I said yesterday, watch out for lightning and get out. You know, don't be outdoors when these strong thunderstorms coming in your area. High today is going to be 89 and low is going to be 75. And the water temperature is 86.2. River readings, I place code up Bluntstown, 5.2 with a little bit of a drop to it. And the Choctaw at Caraville has got a little bit of a bump to it at a 4.5. So both rivers in good shape and uh, good fishing going to be ahead this weekend in, in those rivers. Tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn, flat out neap tides. No kind of movement as far as the tidal flow. The marine forecast east southeast at about 8. And keep in mind too now when we say these this tidal flow, it means a lot when you're fishing in the summertime because you're going to really need to fish deeper. Uh, when you don't have that tidal flow, because that's where the fish are hanging out, and it was deeper holes, and they're not coming in to feed like they normally would. So uh, uh, remember that. It's a good uh, point right there. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. And look who's here, Travis. Good, Good morning. to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Well, listen, I know, I, I hate to say it, every time of the year is busy to y'all, but uh, I know this is a busy time, really. It is, and, and we're winding up summer, so we've got one more big weekend, and then we'll be making that transition um, into the fall, so. Got well, Labor Day coming up. I know y'all will be working hard then. Yes, sir. We'll be out in full force. That's our, our last big hurrah for, you know, boating and fishing holiday of the year, so. I asked Travis how it takes a, a, a patient man or, or lady to be a wildlife officer or any kind of law enforcement officer because you, you're running all kind of people and some aren't really nice, I guess, and some of them don't really, they're not Boy Scouts, I don't guess. That's true. And, uh, That's different every and, time. But let's talk about, you You got a lot of good notes here. We've got to get started. Uh, crabs, these, these crabs. We've got a picture here. Tell, tell us about Tell yes, us about right here. Well, I just wanted to bring that up. This was a case made by one of our officers uh, recently at St. Andrews State Park, and uh, this individual had, uh, you know, 30 or so crabs, and 20 of them were egg-bearing blue crabs. And, um, you know, most people know that you can't have egg-bearing, you can't harvest the egg-bearing crabs. But um, this time of year, it's late summer, and this is all over the panhandle. Mm -hmm. You know, the females are, a lot of them are going to be carrying eggs. And the thing about this picture is you can kind of see, I mean, the obvious ones are the bright orange, mm -hmm. you know, egg sac there attached. Um, but some of them will have kind of that dull color, you know, yeah. and it's just kind of like a brown, brown. Kind of that matches the underside of a, of a crab, a blue crab anyway. So, but if they have any eggs on them, you have to release them. And um, just wanted to bring that up. And I can tell you right now, I mean, just from what I've seen, people harvesting blue crabs, it's really popular all summer, especially late summer. People go in the day, people go at night. Mm -hmm. You can't have the egg bearing crabs. You can have 10 gallons uh, whole crabs per harvester, which is quite a bit, you know, two That's five gallon yeah. buckets yeah. full of blue crabs, plenty to clean and eat. But uh, if they have eggs, it doesn't matter what color they are, let them go. And, and that, that goes to any species, well, anything with, with eggs and all. And we should, it shouldn't even be a law. I mean, you should know that we, we should know this outdoors, but that you right. just you know, let it go because just have the eggs and spawning. So Exactly. So anyway, so uh, keep that in mind, let people know. And these people were out of town and say they did not know, but I like me going up to Tennessee shooting a doe. I mean, you can't shoot a doe. <laughs> I mean, we do know these things. So. Right. So. <laughs> Anyway, just wanted to show everyone that picture and, and, and let them know that, hey, it, sometimes it's, it's different colors, you still mm -hmm. can't have them. And it's the same with spiny lobster, you know, I worked in Palm Beach County yeah. for, for four and a half years starting my career, you know, a lot of people, they, they'd have egg bearing spiny lobster and it's just as obvious as that, so mm -hmm. can't have them. But um, it's really going on right now, there's a lot of blue crabs out there, so just, just be mindful. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else do you have next? Well, I know you've talked about it a lot, and uh, the, the word is out, definitely. It looks like the pen just fell apart. Um, anyways, uh, the word's out about, you know, Scallops and St. Joe. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, having a good year over there, and it opened up on August 17th. It's going to run till September 30th. Um, 
you know, I wanted to bring up the fact that I've talked to a lot of our Gulf County guys, they're working it hard and making quite a bit of, you know, bag limit cases because a couple reasons. I mean, sometimes people just go over, but the scallops being that it's a late season mm -hmm. and they're having a pretty good year over there, the scallops are so big, it does it takes a shorter time, you know, or, or less scallops to get to your limit if you're keeping the two gallons whole per harvester. So uh, just need to be mindful. I mean, they're, they're out there, they're working hard, and, and they're checking a lot of people, and they've made several bag limit cases on these, on these people keeping too many scallops over there in St. Joe Bay. And it's been fascinating, and I was telling Travis before we came on air, I, I sort of had my, my, my hand on the pulse of this because so many people have given me reports, and I've been over there a couple of times and talked to people. About, so anyway, to put it in a nutshell, the population now is going down, the population of scallops. And... Uh, I get all the feedback, and that first week, almost everybody was getting their limit. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, understandable. There was so many that was a good, good population. But now, I'm saying about 80% of people are not getting their limits, and I base this on, on, you know, the correspondence I get and people I talk to, and I know a lot of people are going, but about 80% of us are not uh, are not getting limit. So mm -hmm. be aware of that. And uh, as the season progresses, what the what the uh, veterans do, they really want to. Uh, get into uh, into the scallops and all, they're going deeper. So uh, I don't care about diving in an eight-foot hole for a scallop. Well, going down there and looking at eyeball to eyeball with a bull shark. <laughs> that's, so, a, that's a lot more work, too. <laughs> it's a lot dive, more work going down. way down there. So anyway, speaking of scallops, I showed this picture. This is fascinating. Okay. <laughs> uh, not something to see every day. Is Sherwin it? Prowl sent this, and this is... Uh, he, they were, they, I guess, landed a plane out there and they were scalloping. And then uh, Randy Burling sent in a question and wanted me to ask you, uh, what's the, we know what the limit is for boats and individuals. What's the <laughs> limit for a plane? <laughs> That's funny. I know Randy uh, Burling. Uh, uh, good guy. Well, well the is. answer to it, you know, um, I did a little research on it and I'm uh, pretty sure I knew the answer <laughs> beforehand. But, you know, the definition of a vessel, because we have a, a harvester limit for scallops, and then we have a, a vessel limit, whichever is less that you have to follow. And uh, um, a vessel defined is a watercraft or conveyance used or capable of being used as a means of transportation on water. Okay. So that seaplane, as it's kind of putting around there, it's being used as a vessel at that time. So it would still be the same, you know, okay. as far as your harvester limit, which is two gallons whole or one pipe meat cleaned, or 10 gallons per vessel. You okay. know, clean, uh, excuse me, whole and then, you know, half gallon clean. So it would be the same. It looked like they had two people on there. So yeah, it would still yeah. be falling the, the four <laughs> gallons whole. Um, but I tell you what, another thing, when I saw that picture, just, I, I guess, kind of the, the, you know, law enforcement side thinking, was where's that plane going? Because just like any, you know, whether it be a grouper season that we've talked about or scallops, it has to be landed in an open area. So where's that plane going? Uh -huh. When they do harvest the scallops, they need to be landing in basically, I guess, Gulf County. Because a lot of these places to the east have closed. So That's they right. have to land in an open area. Uh, to you know, by the letter of law to, to follow it. So but that's pretty funny. I, I've never seen that. And uh, I tell you what, I mean, I guess like I say, the words out, people are going to get them. <laughs> no so. one, no, none of us have ever seen this. We've been we've spent a lifetime on that St. Joe Bay uh, on scallop season, and nobody, and Sherwin, you know, <laughs> has never seen it either. So it's it's funny. And uh, yeah, we got to find out who that was. We got to interview them. That's got to be a, a unique situation. But let's Absolutely. take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. So here with Travis Basford, FWC officer, and we've got so much stuff to go over. Let's get started. We've got a lot more stuff. Oh, yeah, we've got plenty. Real quick, one more thing, um, talking about St. Joe Bay and the scallop season, something I talk about every year. Um, just everyone needs to use their dive flags. And mm -hmm. then if you're operating your vessel and uh, you need to be looking for dive flags, a lot of people don't know, but um, we talked about the rule as far as just 300 feet in open water. Mm -hmm. So if you're out there in the bay, you need to stay at least 300 feet or a football field away um, from someone that's you know snorkeling, diving with a dive flag out. Um, if you're coming into a congested area, right in there to Presnell's or an area where you just you have to go within 300 feet of the mm -hmm. dive flag, make sure you bring it down all the way to idle. Idols defined as, you know, basically just put your vessel in gear, uh, your boat in gear, and then enough to maintain steerage way. So yeah. you're just easing along. Let me comment on that. I observe it every year, and this year that has really been good. Well, good. Behaved. it's been really good. People were watching out, going slow. I hadn't seen any you know, yahoos going through like in years past. So that's, that's been awesome. Good. Yeah, that's what we want. I mean, that's the thing. We want everyone to go out there, 
you know, be able to, you know, harvest the resource and do it safely. Mm -hmm. um, another thing real quick on the dive flag is a lot of people don't know this, but if, you, if you're driving your boat across the bay and you zip through and you come in there within 50 feet of somebody and they've got a dive flag out and people in the water, it's actually a criminal violation because mm -hmm. it's considered reckless operation of a vessel. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, another thing our officers are going to be looking for as they're out there working scallop season. Um, another thing that uh, just happened um, about the time, same time that scallop mm -hmm. opened um, is gray trigger fish. There was a closure um, issued by NOAA Fisheries in federal waters. So we've got kind of a unique situation now. Um, trigger fish is closed in federal waters, open in state waters okay. for the time being. Okay. Um, so it's important to know, and we know the, the line's nine miles, um, but I wanted to bring that up. Now, how long is it gonna stay open in state waters? I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. um, if it does um, close, then we're gonna put a bulletin out. We're gonna you know, get that information out there. But um, as of now, that's the deal. So uh, it'll be closed through the end of the year in federal waters. Okay. And it might be closing in state. They felt it, like we hit a quota pretty soon, pretty it, quick. That's exactly yeah, what yeah. it was. They thought they hit, we hit the quota. And yeah. uh, if, if it does close in state waters, I'll shoot you an email so you can get that information okay. out before I'm on, because it might be closing before I'm on again. Um, we don't know. And then, of course, Amberjack is still open, right. state and federal, August 1st through October 31st. That could be subject to change too, but if it does, we'll try to get that information out there. We got a uh, FWC commission meeting coming up. It's gonna be right over at uh, Florida Public Safety Institute in Havana. Okay. And like always, I just encourage people, um, if, if you're interested in anything you know, to do with FWC, mm -hmm. um, you know, go attend the meeting. It's a it's a pretty cool process to mm -hmm. see. You can, you can go up there, you can speak on a topic, whether it be land-based shark fishing, scallops, uh, deer hunting, turkey hunting, mm -hmm. bear hunting, whatever it is. And um, we've just seen just in recent years, I mean, stakeholder input is having a, a big to-do and a big um, influence sometimes on rulemaking. Mm -hmm. um, we saw some changes get made with some local guides here with the sheep's head um, that was really pushed for, for several years, mm -hmm. and um, it's just a cool experience. So if, if you want to go to that, September 26th and 27th in Havana at the Florida Public Safety Institute. Okay, good deal. Yep, so um, that's pretty much it, other than we do have alligator season going on. Yes. Um, and that's exactly. been open. Um, the one thing I want to stress there, I know you said you went the, the other night, is um, hunt your phase. That, that's the biggest thing that we see, um, you know, the alligator hunt that Florida has has just been great, and, and it's looked all across the U.S. as just a really good system they have with the quota yeah. and the phases, how they spread everything out and the tags. Yep. Um, so that's just the important thing. You know, you've got your three phases that you have to hunt those dates, and then at the end, everybody can hunt if you have any tags left over. So just make sure you're looking and paying attention to that because, I don't know, we seem to see that a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, it's pretty simple. You just look. Mm -hmm. at your dates that you can go, go the dates you can, and if you don't fill your tags at the very end of the season, mm -hmm. anybody can go. Okay. So that's important to remember. Um, and then before I'm on again, we're going to have some hunting seasons coming up. Yes. And, um, I, you know, September 22nd this year, they've set the dates for the migratory bird seasons. That's early wood duck and teal season. Um, it's going to run September 22nd through the 26th. That's wood duck and teal, and just like we've had for several, several years, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of that, the 27th through the 30th is teal only. Oh. And the only important thing to remember on that, uh, again, we could, spend, <laughs> we could spend a whole show just talking about duck hunting. I and, know. And the rules and regulations, but uh, just remember, it's only two wood ducks during early season as opposed to three during regular. Yeah. You could have six teal. Um, and, and, uh, and what about dove season? Dove season, that's going to be coming up, too. Same, open up the same. It sure what, is. The same day. Yeah. Is that right? and, yes, it is. The 22nd. Yeah. They bumped it up. Um, you know, all growing up, it was always that first weekend in October. Always. And they bumped it back. And now, yeah, Dove first phase is going to open September 22nd. Mm -hmm. It's going to run through October 14th. So the whole second half of October is going to be closed, whereas normally that's like yeah. Dove. Yeah, that's going to catch a lot of people by surprise. It is. So, so yeah, is. pay attention to those phases. Yeah. And um, and then the, the, the change this year, um, another big change is going to be that phase three. They extended that um, all the way through the end of January. Oh, really? So, yeah. So um, there's phase one, September 22nd through October 14th. Two is going to be November 10th through December 2nd. And then three, December 19th through January 31st. And 
I think I was telling you uh, last time, um, you know, going deer hunting in January, I was seeing more birds than I was yeah, you told me that, in yeah. September and October. And I tell you what, um, that'll give, you know, opportunities to try to get those late yeah. season birds. So. Yeah. And it's amazing how they sort of tweak these changes just a little bit at a time. And uh, most of that's to try to help us uh, on the harvest and all. They do. And that's good. Yep. Help us on the harvest, help the birds, and yep. shoot like we were talking about with scallops. I mean, they're they're really big when they do have the late they season. Sure are. They sure are. I don't think people are complaining about that. So, All right. Let's take our final break. We'll come back with our case of the month. Okay, welcome back. Uh, quick look at our fishing game time brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers, 3.34 to 5.34 this morning. We're wrapping that one up, but uh, late this afternoon, 3.57 to 5.57. And quickly, before we get into the case of the month, we've got dove season com up, coming up. Briefly tell us about what's legal to bait or you know, what's illegal to bait. What, what can we and cannot do? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll briefly go over it, and then we can go over it in detail. But for yeah. the most part, if you're going to dove hunt, it needs to be a field used for, like, agricultural purposes okay okay and uh, that's not excluding food plots and stuff like that but for the most part a peanut field a corn field mm -hmm. if someone want to plant millet sunflower seeds and all that you can bush hog it you okay. can do that but you cannot like like we just talked about you can't have a, a millet field and then crack corn out there okay. you can't just be hunting a grass field and have you know bird seed and stuff like that you can't add the stuff after the fact Okay. So we'll go over that in detail a little okay. more. Um, well, before we get, before the hunt season, season opens up, we'll come out. Yep. All right, case always, of the month. This is going to be a good one, you said. a big thing. Yep, case of the month. Now, this one here, um, we're making that transition. My favorite time of the year, fall, we're just right around the corner. And um, this one here, we're, it's a hunting case. It was made up in Jackson County. And uh, y'all might get a laugh out about this one. But um, I tell you, sometimes people, when they just, if they see that opportunity to, to, to harvest something, sometimes they just can't resist and wait. So this one here, I'll read the story and then we can talk about it. Okay. Um, lieutenant Ben Allen, a uh, great case he made up there in Jackson County. He's the lieutenant up there for Jackson. He was on patrol near a landowner's cornfield um, up in Jackson when he heard a shot. He headed toward the sound of the shot and about an eight point buck comes running toward him from the direction where the shot was. He said, hmm, this doesn't seem too right. Well, right after that, there was a truck slow rolling. He contacted the uh, the driver of the truck and, and the guy just told him said I'm not even gonna lie I just shot at you know a buck <laughs> and he goes okay so he anyways he, he gets the people out starts talking with them and what had happened is a uh, a nice buck had run across the road these two guys were in a pickup and he pulled out his 380 pistol and started shooting at that deer and uh, I don't know a 380 is not <laughs> usually used to, to take them down but I mean it could if you hit one but that'd be a hard shot Man. Um, hitting one on the run so <laughs> anyways um, he called Officer Brian Little over to assist, okay. and they ended up getting the guys out, interviewing them, um, and the individual was cited for uh, attempting to take wildlife from a public road and attempting to take um, deer during the closed season. They seized a 380 pistol as evidence because that's what he used to, you know, basically road hunt and try to take a deer out of season. And they, they checked. They didn't see any blood, so... I think they missed. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I don't. You know, he's got to be, be a hard a shot. Sh he's got to be a sharpshooter to do that. <laughs> yeah, try to hit a buck on a run with a 380. But, <laughs> but anyways, good case uh, by Lieutenant Ben Allen and uh, Officer Brian Little up there in Jackson County. I mean, it's going on. We've had night hunting cases been starting to get made. You know, it, um, okay. as soon as the deer have their racks, I think it puts a little extra, I don't know, incentive. And, and mm -hmm. the, sometimes these these guys that want to shoot them at night or in mm -hmm. a closed season, they'll, they'll do it. So. Anyway, it's a good case by those guys. It's fascinating. So you're making cases in the woods and on the water. Oh, yeah. The and water's still uh, really, really busy. Um, like I mentioned over there in Gulf County with the scallops, and then we're still seeing people go offshore, and mm -hmm. some cases are being made there. Um, blue crabs, redfish, you know, back in the bay. Mm -hmm. um, it's been busy. So I think everyone's looking forward to this weekend. You know, we'll finish up the summer strong and uh, hopefully have a good, safe, you know, weekend mm -hmm. boating-wise. And then we'll make that transition into the fall and, and into the woods. Well, we've got a couple minutes left. When we're going back to making these cases on scallop because we have another month left. When the guys, uh, the Gulf County guys and all, working them all, but they're saying that people are just uh, 
are they miscounting or are they just trying? I mean, obviously, you know, you get two gallons. I know you might be a little bit over or under, but right. I, they probably don't fool with a little bit over. Right. But it, if it's got to be pretty obvious. I exactly. Mean. And there is some discretion there on that. But yeah, it's just what they've told me is because they're so big this late season, and it's, you know, it's been several years since we've had a good year over mm -hmm. there. We had the red tide, then we had the closures, and now this season pushed back. But they just said, you know, basically because the scallops are so big, it takes a lot less to get to your limit mm -hmm. if you're mm -hmm. if you're doing the the uh, whole scallops you know mm -hmm. in, in the bucket so um, but yeah um, that that's a pretty interesting number you threw out too the 80 percent not getting them yeah. so and uh, that's typical as end you know mm -hmm. as, it, as it goes into the later stages of the year but um, still a lot of people going there are a lot of people going and uh, some people stay a little while some people are I had uh, some people told me they stayed almost a whole day Saturday before the storm and the storm is coming up quick down there too oh, yeah, and getting out of there and then you, remember you got to be waiting in line to get out so you got you got to be uh, try to you know get a, out ahead of time when you see the storm coming up and you know luckily we have the radar you can check on your phone and know what which direction that storm's coming that's a great tool we use that all the time and uh, what do you guys do I've been asking you this other day when it's storming out there and y'all I mean what do y'all do y'all just dodge them or what we try to do is and and we we've, we've we're blessed to have good equipment we try to run around them okay and that's just one of those ones where it's just going to wipe across everything and we use our phones too you know you look okay. at the radar and a lot of times you run around it, and uh, sometimes you can just run offshore, mm -hmm. let it come by, come back in, or vice versa, and um, that's normally what we do. Now, once you get out in the federal waters, you lose your cell phone service. It's a little more difficult. You just kind of have to look at it yeah. and the wind and which way it's going and go around it. But we try to just run around them. Mm -hmm. But they has, there's been some really strong uh, thunderstorms, you know, in August, I would say. Yes, there we, have been. Even up at our house, up at Deer Point, they um, knocked the power out mm -hmm. and had trees down. And um, But, yeah, we've had a wet wet summer mm -hmm. you know so and we got uh, we got uh, you know mullet cast netting coming up a lot of folks be throwing what's the limit on cast you netting believe it. yeah you can have 50 50 and that's I, it remember that. oh you don't want to clean that many but <laughs> that's a lot to clean <laughs> that's a lot to clean it is and uh, they'll be rolling up so be aware of that uh, they will we got uh, uh, I know the Kings have had a, a strong run this late summer, and then already we've seen some Spanish start come back in, and then following them be the Pompano for the fall run. Yes, uh, some Spanish are coming back. So y'all are seeing Spanish now. Yeah, good especially deal. Pensacola, they're they're coming back. So Very good. That's the that's, that's a the good sign. That's the report. So. All right, well, Travis, we're gonna wrap it up. As always, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Enjoy it. Appreciate it. As always, thank y'all for watching Panhandle Outdoors. Always great having Travis here. Go on, if you have any questions, you know, send me an email or text, and I'll try to get a hold of Travis and get those questions answered for you. And so we'll all be better off and better informed. Thank y'all for watching. Do something good today for your fellow man. Have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.